Hi, this is Charlene Mosier from Sound Sewing Silverdale, Washington and Foff Crave Sewing Center, Lacey, Washington. Today we are going to do a lesson on your creative icon by Foff on how to do precise positioning in the embroidery. First thing we are going to do is we're in our home screen of our machine. We are going to press start embroidering. If it pops up for you to calibrate your embroidery unit, go ahead and press OK so that your embroidery unit will calibrate and be ready. We are going to go get our first design. To do that, we need to come up to, to our mini main menu. Once that comes up, you do have your categories of different embroidery stitches that are built into the machine. We are going to scroll through until we find holiday. And in the holiday, we have a lot of really fun, cute, Christmas and Easter, Halloween designs. And we are going to go find number 22, which is a little elf, Santa elf. It will come up with the first hoop that is available for that design. I'm going to go into my hoop options down here on the bottom, right where it says actual hoop options, and I'm going to touch it and I'm going to select the hoop I'm going to use. Hoop I have ready today is a uh, deluxe hoop, 360 by 200. Uh, this one doesn't come with a machine, I just happen to have that hoop ready to go. However, you can use, uh, if you want to have a hoop close to mine, the 360 by 260, it will fit in there definitely. It will also fit in the one below called the Elite Hoop that came with the machine, 260 by 200, or you could use the Creative 120 by 120 square hoop as well but I'm going to use a deluxe for today. Once I've selected that, it turns green and I press the hoop options again to close the menu and then I see the parameter of my hoop. So I'm ready to go to stitch out. So right down here on the bottom left hand corner, it says embroidery stitch out. I'm going to go ahead and touch that. My embroidery unit was going to get friendly and move over and it opens up my setting menu. All my setting menu is going to tell me is it's going to tell me what hoop I have told it and that's the only hoop it will let me use. Right now I have my zigzag plate on. To have better embroidery and better performance you really should use their single needle plate. Um, I also am using my 6D dynamic foot. That is the embroidery foot that came with it. There is a sensormatic one but your embroidery machine is going to perform better with the dynamic. My Stitch technology is on, active stitch technology is on, my cut jump stitches is on, and then a lot of times we want to go ahead and do based around the hoop. I'm not going to do that right now because I'm going to go in and do precise positioning and it'll undo this menu if I press it. So I'll just wait till I'm done precise positioning and let's go ahead and press OK. It comes up and uh, my color window is open and I'm going to just close some things here. There we go. I am going to show you that my design is right here in my screen and I can move this screen around. Most likely you don't have all these menus open, but there, there is what you should be seeing on your screen. Now I'm going to go to precise positioning. It's just right down here and it's just the words precise positioning. Go ahead and press that. Oh, it's yelling at me already. Once we go ahead and attach the hoop. So I am going to do that. and I had an upgrade trying to run and we didn't like that. Okay, so I am going to press OK because now I have that hoop on, it will double check. What I am going to do, I have to tell it again. What I'm going to do is in the precise positioning, I want to try to make this line and you know, I just realized that you can't see this line because the it is grayed out. So what we're going to do is we are going to cancel real quick and say OK. And if yours is looking grayed out and ghost like this, which means you can hardly see it, I would like you to open up your palette. And in the palette, you have this butterfly, which is your ghost mode. Go ahead and undo that. And now when I close my palette, now you can see my design a lot better. I do want to see it so I can see where I'm placing it. Because now we're going to go back into precise positioning. And what we're going to do is I want to place this line that the elf is looking over and we are going to place it right on this line right here. So my first stitch, I'm going to make sure of that line is actually right here on this cross. And then I'm going to have the rest of the line come across here. So I want the left side right here. On my screen, 
I do have a green cross actually on my screen and I am going to move that to the left part of where that embroidery okay, line you. is. To see if I'm directly on it, I have right down here my zoom options. There's an hourglass with an A, with a hoop, and with a cross. We want to touch the hourglass with the cross to zoom right in. Now I am way off of the design, I wasn't near it. So I'm going to move this until I can see that black line is actually in the center of my cross. There's a little hole in the center of that cross on my screen and I can't see the black in it. Once I have done that, I am going to press number two. Two. <laughs> number two has this hoop icon on it. That means right now my hoop just moved to show me when that needle comes down to start sewing that line, where that line is. So if I come over here to my machine and lower my needle, it's going to sew it here, but I want it down here. So we could do that real easily. I'm going to raise my needle back up again. I am going to touch my zoom to hoop, which is the middle zoom. And I'm going to just pick up the design by touching it and dragging it towards my line. And see, when I get close to my line, like I am now, I'm fairly close. So I'm going to take off this foot just so you guys can see a little better because it is hard to see around this foot with the camera. So now when I put the, my needle down, I can see I'm not quite in the cross. I am very close. So I'm going to use on my screen, there is an up, down, left, right activity ball. I am going to use this to move this where I want. And it's going to move a tenth of a millimeter at a time. You should be able to get very precise with this because there is roughly 25 millimeters to an inch and I'm moving this one tenth of a millimeter at a time. So the more you press, the longer you press, the more it will move until I have it right where I want. Right on that cross. Then I'm going to raise this up and now I want to have it on the second side of my line up here. So I need to press number three in my menu to give me a second crosshair. You'll get a second crosshair. I could pick that up and move it to the left side. I'm sorry, I'm dyslexic, to the right side of my design. Well, I got pretty close. I'm going to zoom in using the, the zoom to cross and I am going to bring this up and get it so that I can see that little black going right through the center of my cross so I know I'm right where I want. Then I'm going to press number four to say where's that at? Well that's down here. If you look I drew my line crooked so what's going to happen is is I'm going to pivot that one up to the line. It's going to pivot off of number one. So my first one's right here. My design is going to swing up and down, leaving my first cross right here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the right. So I'm up to the side, so it's hard to, and that's the wrong way. Go the other way. And this bit goes, the longer it goes, the more it jumps. You can see how it's swinging up. And this is going to go about a tenth of a degree at a time. So again, you should be able to really fine tune this. I didn't mean to draw such a drastic line, but it shows you can. And there we go. And now my needle is right on that line. So once I'm done there, I am going to press OK on my precise positioning screen. You have to do OK to keep your positioning. I did forget to zoom out, so I'm going to go into my stitch out progress. And there's my hourglass with a hoop in it so I can zoom out. Then I'm also going to base in the hoop now. So I'm going to touch my palette. And up here by where I had the ghost butterfly, I have the basting options. And I'm going to say base around design and press OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and thread my machine up through the antenna. I already made sure I have a needle in there. Make sure you always thread on the right side of the tension assembly. I've been 
go up and down so much. Where's that at? There we go. Come down. Come to my daughter's favorite feature. You want to press it in? I can't really you can't? see. Oh, your needle threader. Gotta put my foot back on. Took it off so you guys could see better. Let's put that foot back on. Okay. Now I'm going to press go to let it face this down. So now I'm going to do color one, which I thought red was color one. It isn't. It's his little face. So let me put in. We're going to thread up for the next color here. I can see that I'm already right on because his face actually lays on that line. So I know I'm good. Now it's going to do some of his hat. So now we are ready for our last color, which will sew in that line that we were uh, placing the design to. So we'll put that in. And then when it's done, I will discuss how we can, uh, how you can determine if you need one precise positioning or two precise positionings. So we will uh, go ahead and do that. And I will go, and here is getting ready to put in all the finishing works. There he is, and I hit right on the line. So uh, a lot of times you can get away with just doing one point, but because we were hitting this line, it's why we did two, get my hand out of the way, why we did two points. And it just depends on what you need to do. If you are trying to get into something where you are trying to line something up and you have a big design, always go the farthest two points away from each other. This design wasn't very big, but if I'm doing a hoop this big and my design is this long, I wanna make sure I go all the way out. A lot of times you can do precise positioning with just one point, uh, but we wanna make sure we covered how to do both points. Go ahead and try it out. Practice with this little guy. He's a lot of fun. He's built in and you'll see how he easy it really is to do. Thank you.